Hey, it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on rewiring a more positive emotional state, really expanding the repertoire of your emotions after you have come through a seething, perhaps toxic relationship with an emotional manipulator a narcissist, a covert narcissist, a sociopath, or a psychopath. Someone who is part of their DNA has a pathological sense of self-absorption, self-importance, and coupled with a true lack of empathy. And in the case of the sociopath or the psychopath, a more severe, intense lack of conscience and lack of feeling. Um, these individuals, based on the neural networks that wire and fire and their neural, uh, the neural patterning and how their brains and emotional centers and reward centers work, they do not experience really the emotions of humanity, the emotions of compassion, the emotions of joy, bliss. Um, they lack the in, in, uh, ability to learn from their mistakes. And they do not experience um, love, connection, bonding, happiness, fulfillment. They really are very devoid of this, meaning void as in there is a non-existence of this with them. And so when we get into this very reduced spectrum of feelings, oftentimes it catches people off guard and they don't know what they're dealing with until really kind of after the fact or after the hurt after the devastation and after the exposure. And it is that topic that I want to really develop and really expand on in this video and how important it is to you, for you to re-experience these and really almost schedule these, not almost, most definitely schedule these into a very specific appointment or scheduling within your life. Um, so you can begin to Focus on this, experience these, and then begin to get these in groove and get these recongruent with your life so they become more natural. And before we uh, focus in on that topic, I want to give a huge shout out to those of you who have recently donated to the channel, particularly a lovely viewer, a uh, gentleman that we have who is tuning in from the great territory of the Australian uh, country of Australia. Um, a huge shout out to you. Thank you so much for your viewership. Uh, your support love you so much thank you so much for your continued uh, loyalty to the channel and really getting a a track uh, for yourself in moving through and rising up uh, through some very bewildering relationship issues so it's an honor a privilege and a pleasure to be able to come all the way um, out there to you so thank you so much for your continued support and your input it is so valued uh, here on the channel and I really want to dive in uh, and focus in and zoom in on how important it is to expand your emotional repertoire after you have been in a toxic relationship with an individual who has been overbearing, who has been um, controlling, who has been very judgmental, who has been very harsh, uh, who has perhaps engaged in a lot of pathological lying, um, who has engaged in a lot of deception. Uh, someone who has put on a mask or a persona that they are the end all be all in life, uh, particularly maybe targeting you, scoping you out and zooming in on you perhaps as a scapegoat. Uh, you have been easy target, easy to manipulate for them, and they have found themselves a winner in you when it came to lashing out or projecting a lot of this onto you. And in the beginning, it doesn't mean that the relationship has always been this way. Um, they might have groomed you from the beginning to connect with you as, you know, like two pieces in a puzzle, as if, you know, you were the part to their counterpart. Um, you were the perfect match. Um, you might have been um, a good listener. You might have been um, an open heart. You might have been um, a good cheerleader for them. You might have been... Um, you know, there for them financially. You might have been there a shoulder for them to cry on. You might have, you know, heard a lot of sob stories from this person. Um, you might have said, uh, this person's a great fixer-upper. You know, this is the person for me. 
I have an abundance of love. I have an abundance of affection. I have an abundance of money. I have an abundance of uh, cooking school skills. I have an abundance of, uh, you know, uh, hardware skills, uh, handyman skills, handywoman skills. You know, I can be there for this person and I can love enough for the both of us. And as the relationship continued, um, you know, you were, you know, realizing that there is a real deficit in this person. Maybe there's, there became some bitter sarcasm, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, snide comments, um, a lot of uh, hurtful body language, um, perhaps um, ignoring of you or lack of validating of you. And because they had provided something very specific to you in the beginning, which was filling up a need, a void for companionship or something of that nature, you know, you felt that, you know, this was the one. Perhaps you committed your life to them. Perhaps you committed your business to them. Perhaps this is a family member where really you had to get along, adapt, and adjust. And then a lot of your time and your emotional repertoire, if you look at the state of emotions very much like a, um, a rainbow, you know, there's a whole spectrum and a wide range um, of feelings that we can experience. And um, oftentimes, you know, in the beginning, there might have been a real abundance of the positive, especially in the situation when you're dealing with a psychopath they will really groom you or love bomb you, idealize you to feel like you have met your match. You can completely let your guard down. You can, um, you know, you listen to perhaps their sob stories, especially in the psychopath. They're going to get you in some sort of way where they will begin to help you uh, to feel connected to them. In other words, they're beginning the grooming. They are mimicking the feelings. They are mimicking the love. They are mimicking the sex. They are, you know, over... Uh, they're they're getting you hooked in, in essence, and so um, the psychopath, which has they they don't feel these feelings. They will put on a facade of needing uh, an individual. They just might need. They're very parasitic in that they might need a business partner. They might need um, a uh, a companion to ward off their boredom. You know, there's specific things where in that you discover, you know, that this person was completely you know, a lie, um, a sham and a facade. And now it's left you terrorized. And oftentimes you've now in the course of the relationship, your emotional state has become very limited to the fight or flight. You know, the, the over, uh, the, you know, having to work harder and harder to please them. Um, you know, perhaps you had felt like you won their esteem, you won their pleasure, you won their smile, you won their date, whatever it is that you did in the beginning of the relationship, the business partnership, the approval from them. Um, and, you know, perhaps there was the, the flattery, um, you know, which you then, you know, fell for, um, you know, feel, them telling you the most handsome man in the world, the most beautiful woman in the world, la da 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 da. Okay. So then your spectrum of emotions then became caught up in trying to over please them, um, you know, or to keep them you know, really um, back in love with you um, as you start to feel things, you know, start to go awry or a little bit of distance. Um, so you might have worked harder on trying to keep them there. Um, make yourself more attractive, uh, giving them more time, um, responding to their texts, staying awake, um, sacrificing family events, um, other things in your life to keep them there. Um, you know, work through and, you know, really um, sort of uh, get into that adrenal fatigue where you became um, over um, over obligated to them um, and then became you know oftentimes you know they will break you down you become excessively tired or you become uh, caught up in uncertainty and you know maybe some paranoia suspicion all the different negative emotions that you know um, that can plague you including most particularly that of uncertainty um, not really knowing where you stand, not really knowing if you're loved. You seem to feel loved. You know, you seem, you know, uh, you seem that this could be, but yet there seems to always be something that is missing. You're not getting a commitment. You're not getting the approval. You're not getting the validation. You're not getting the eye contact. You're not getting the true embrace. Um, you're getting um, more of a superficial side of them. And yet, 
a lot of, oftentimes the real genuine people will work harder and harder and harder to get closer and closer and closer to solidify the relationship, to seal the deal, to, you know, make, um, you know, to make everything harmonious, to make everything good, to make everything solid, to make everything, um, you know, on track and so that this bliss can be realized. And then you might blow them apart. You realize that they have cheated on you, cheated on the business, um, you know, that they are disingenuine, that it is all uh, very superficial, um, you know, and we talk about the personalities that are narcissistic or psychopathic. And oftentimes these are, you know, oftentimes the very successful business people, the very successful uh, musicians, uh, graphic artists, you know, the artists, they might have a very strong talent. And, um, you know, and so, you know, you feel that, you know, you have then been betrayed by them personally. Um, so it doesn't mean that they're accomplished. You always felt kind of in your heart of hearts that they could do better. They could commit to you. They could resolve things. You could come to closure. And so this uncertainty has really plagued you, this sort of confusion, this con conundrum, or perhaps just the hurt of being betrayed and um, kind of exposing them. And so your emotional repertoire has become very limited or very overpronounced in the negative where you're feeling way too much anger, um, repetitive ruminations of, of regret, um, repetitive ruminations of uh, betrayal, um, you know, flashbacks of them hurting you and then why me, why me, you know, all the negative questions which are getting you nowhere. And so these, your emotional repertoire has, con, you know, continued to be more of the anxiety, the depression, the fear, the guilt, um, the regret, the feeling of hopelessness. So your whole spectrum of feelings has now become very limited and they're, you're kind of not getting some traction. So I, I very much um, discuss in the recovery journal how important it is to schedule um, a recovery date for yourself where you then also expand upon a richer set of emotions um, such as uh, fascination, joy, bliss, peace, relief, innocence, um, expanding your emotions to experience um, wonder, um, awe, uh, the experience of the mystical, the experience of the divine, uh, the experience of worshiping a force greater than yourself. Um, a higher intelligence, um, great human feats such as, you know, amazing artwork, um, amazing science, um, amazing work of the testimony of the positive human spirit, um, appreciating uh, great, great acts of nature, um, looking at national monuments, perhaps in your area, going out and just, you know, resensitizing yourself getting, uh, you know, getting um, tool in hand, doing some whittling, doing some woodworking, um, doing some uh, remodeling around your house, doing it, you know, some do-it-yourself projects where you really begin to get in touch with your new industriousness, your own productivity, your own positive influence and affect, and really schedule those in. And so um, I want you to realize that, you know, perhaps there, there has been a real void of this in your life. And it's time to now schedule in another part of the rainbow, another aspect of your emotional repertoire and give yourself a chance to experience this. And oftentimes the very first needs to just be of surrender and, you know, um, time to surrender, meaning time to let go of the ruminations and the story that has created the ruminations. I am so awful. I was not good enough. I was not smart enough. Why did I let it go this long? You know, all, you know, a cessation of fear, a cessation of the, the beating up, those, you know, those feelings. So that is the first um, example. So as you know, I highly recommend, um, and this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but getting a day minder book. If you can't get this from Amazon or eBay or someplace at an office place, find something similar that has, um, you know, for example... You know, I have several of these um, as an appointment book, but you need to find where you schedule in things like this and hour by hour. 
And an example might be, you know, you might say, what day is my recovery day? You want to set aside two hours at least a week, and then you want to expand it to maybe two hours two times a week, and then do half a day, and then do a full day, a full recovery weekend, you know, a full recovery week, and then eventually you'll begin to jog this new positive feeling and get have a reset and a reprogramming of your emotional state. So you might um, just say like this. 10 to 2 on Friday, surrender, or be, surrender. So it's very simple like this, be, surrender. Um, or schedule in, you know, 1 to 3, um, be curious. And then put in, you know, like a star, do a little bit of a... Uh, you know, of a star or something that gives it kind of an emoji feel, if you will. So you give a sense of self-expression to that date. Um, then you might have, you know, like three, two, five, be inspired. I N S P I R E D. If I can get a pen that works. So it would look like this, be inspired and then have some smiley faces. Give an expression to it. You might put a heart, you might put a smiley face, you know, you might put a star, you might put a building, you know, it might, um, you might put a, the sign of your religious faith, but you need to schedule in not only your recovery date, but emotional states, you know, be curious, um, be at peace. Um, what are some of other emotional states? Um, be centered be congruent, be grounded, be happy, uh, be, um, you know, uh, feel or experience the amazing, experience the awesome, experience the magnificent, experience the divine, um, experience art, experience um, hard work, um, experience joy, experience bliss, you know, all these other repertoire of emotions, um, experience independence, experience autonomy, experience freedom, experience, um, you know, uh, solace, um, experience focus. So these are some things that you can see where you might be missing right now and you need to schedule these in. If you feel odd doing this, excellent. You are on the right path because you need to do something different to change. Your life is not going to change if you can't continue to, you know, do the same things and, you know, we, we think 60 to 70 thoughts a day. And, you know, your thoughts are the language of the mind, but the feelings are the language of the body. And in order to get a new, a, a new change, a new perspective, a new emotional repertoire, a new behavior, and a new identity, and really truly work through this and heal for good, you need to do something different. You need to make different choices. You need to make, be decisive and 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 file and keep this in front of you and hold yourself to it like an appointment like a doctor appointment um you know like like a job you know like you know where you're you're supposed to be there from 9 to 5 or 10 to 6 you know you need to en engage in this and you can still engage in these new emotions while you're working so for example if you've been in this agitated state um, sort of checked out state, fearful state, you know, so much of your time is engaged in this regret, um, guilt, you know, it's never too late. I was at a luncheon this weekend and there was a gal sitting next to me and she was in her seventies and she told me at the luncheon, she said, I've never been so happy in my life. She said, I'm finally finding what I adore. I finally am finding happiness and I wish I had done this a lot earlier. And she's telling me about how she looks at the clouds and, you know, she takes these walks and she volunteers at a pantry and she's never, be she's never felt better in her life. It's never too late to start, but start is the beginning. You know, it takes the first step to really create that journey. And if you, you will then surprise yourself at the strides you make if you schedule this in and you will see that it actually works. When you do the kinesthetics of taking pen to paper, writing down like we discussed in the recovery journal, all the different segments, 
you will find that the really the road will rise to meet you that solutions will begin to come people will come opportunities will come um, the finances will come things will begin to come together and you'll be able to make radical change but not only that you know manifest radical change but experience change and experience a changed state a changed you which is more centered focused stable happy and not the wounded victim the, who's caught up in fear, anxiety, terror, and going nowhere. You'll find that the doors begin to open and you go there with peace, calm, focus, serenity, and security. And you'll know that your healing time has arrived. You need to work on it consistently. You need to schedule these in. Schedule in your, your emotional states that you can determine right now. If you can get a piece of paper and write down a list of 1 to 20 and write down a list of various different emotions, positive emotions, which you need to feel, you need to experience, but you have been holding yourself back because based on the self-limiting beliefs that this emotional manipulator has installed in your life, you need to kind of get the eraser out and, you know, let's, let's not go there anymore. You've spent enough time indulging in the negative. It's time now to indulge in the positive and do this on a consistent basis and not on a limiting basis because people will find that they're going to backslide and, you know, fall back into regret, regret, fall back into people pleasing, fall back into insecurity, fall back into uh, self negation, fall back into insecurity, fall back into all the critical states with which this person was trying to keep you trapped and ensnared. But as you do this, you'll see, you'll see it for what it is. The emotional manipulator was strictly trying to make a target out of you and make a win out of you, make a victim out of you. And just see, basically, see, I told you so. I told you you were weak. I told you you would fall. I told you you're a nobody. Do you see how they set you up for the fail? Um, and then, you know, they, they, they try to complete the cycle. It's time now to complete the cycle within yourself. So in the, in the space of this moment, if you can write down 1 to 20, 20 emotions that I would love to experience and begin at the very raw state. So if it's happiness, you know, what does that look like? Does it look like a smile? Does it look like a little bit of energy? Like you could, you know, jump up. You've got a pep in your step. Is it um, experiencing bliss, just feeling free, feeling like you're letting go of all the worries, the trepidation, the judgment, the I'm not good enough, letting go of the I'm not letting go of that? Is it curiosity? Is it learning, you know, a new skill? Is it learning a new language? Is it learning about a new culture or religion? Um, a do it yourself project? Is it, you know, what, what is it that you need to do that you, you've been held back at like a dam in your life, like the water has been pushing up and now the water is going to flow through and you can then now experience these in your life. I want, this is a gift. I want you to give to yourself. Look at your list and begin to plug those into your, you know, you take your list of 20, begin to plug it into your appointment book, fill it up and continue to do it week by week by week by week by week, month by month by month. And you need to schedule this in. You need to focus it in, focus it in and say, you know what? Become expired. What, uh, become um, inspired. Um, I'm expiring the anger and I'm now <laughs> renewing my curiosity. And what does that look like for you? Are you watching a documentary? Are you um, meeting people? Are you looking for a new job? I mean, what are these things that you can plug in? You need to plug and play. And as you take those small baby steps, you'll find that you're making great strides in your life and you're becoming a new identity, a new feeling, a new experience, a new I am upon following up this these tools. It is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.